Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. Today we have a lot to talk about. We're about a week away from new footage of the Acolyte, but we're going to start with Ahsoka Season 2. Rosario Dawson, in a brand new interview, was asked if there's anything new, any information, any updates. And while she says they've not started filming, it's a big deal, it's going to be huge. She hints at a lot more Ahsoka and Sabine, and new storytelling, and maybe new costumes. And she finishes with quote, I want to know what's going on. But now on to our main subject of the day. So we've just passed the 10 year anniversary of Lucasfilm changing Star Wars forever. It would never be the same again. 10 years ago, or just over 10 years ago, April 25th, 2014, Lucasfilm under Disney drew an enormous line in the sand. One which was, and is still controversial, the expanded universe, its characters, most of its stories, some of the best comics and anthologies had been relegated to what they now call Star Wars Legends, and the implications of this change were pretty massive. Now you might be saying, well Meg, the expanded universe was never really canon, and that's true. George Lucas always said the priority was Star Wars, the things that matter most are the original trilogy, the prequel trilogy, the 2008 Clone Wars film, and the subsequent 3D animated show under Dave Filoni. Everything else was supplementary and optional reading, but not compulsory to the main saga. That being said, to so many it was part of their headcanon, and George Lucas's openness to the expanded universe despite him admittedly not being too much of a fan himself, meant fans could pick and choose what they wanted. Their headcanons would vary, and it was the only Star Wars many fans had for so many years. And so two years after the Disney Lucasfilm acquisition, they drew a much harder line than George ever did. The Star Wars fanbase felt as though Disney and Lucasfilm had kind of pushed aside many of the stories and characters we love. And this was made even more apparent when they admitted Episode 7, 8, and 9 was not going to draw upon any of that source material. And so, alas, StarWars.com put out a very strong statement saying the sequel trilogy is not going to follow any of the Zahn books or any of the stories with Luke Han and Leia after Episode 6 from Legends. They were going their own way which fans generally kind of accepted, but it's still rung as bad news. Because back then, this meant many of the stories of our heroes that had become our headcanon, and many of our assumptions had to be thrown out the window. And now you see a lot of fans, who maybe didn't grow up with the expanded universe, make the assumption that all it was, was Earth to the Empire and the post-Endor galaxy. But it was so much more. There were prequel stories, Clone Wars stories, Order 66, and an in-depth analysis of various clones and their perspective of the Great Jedi Purge. There were Mandalorian stories, Old Republic stories going even further back. It was a gigantic library. It's only in more recent years that Lucasfilm is no longer afraid to draw from some of those stories and characters, but it did take a long time. And one aspect I miss is the profound level of depth the expanded universe authors went into concerning the Jedi and the Sith, especially the Sith and the Dark Side. There is so much world building, philosophy, lessons, that you really can't find anywhere else in Star Wars. And with the new Disney canon books, while some have definitely been very impressive, and I won't deny that, compared to the weighty bibliography of Legends, the latter is more expansive. And you know, just a quick note about the Jedi and the Sith. I'm really hoping Leslie Headland keeps to her word about the Acolyte, incorporating some of the hierarchy of Sith from those books, and more. When you read novels like Labyrinth of Evil, Darth Plagueis, the Bane trilogy, you understand it's so much more than just good versus bad, the binary moral compass. When you look at motives and nuance, I would say you get a much better appreciation for the various factions of the Force. I really can't overstate how popular the stories of the expanded universe had become. In the decades since their debut, these stories meant so much to fans and more than Disney has ever acknowledged. I mean, sure, they've done re-releases, slapped a few new covers on them, made a couple of toys, drawn from those stories one or two times, brought Grand Admiral Thrawn into Rebels and then Ahsoka, and now Tales of the Empire 2. But, until that moment in 2014, there was not a strong distinction, not as powerful as a relegation. But you know, as I say, with the Acolyte, with Tantis and the Bad Batch, with what we might see in Dave Filoni's movie and Ahsoka season 2, they're finally embracing and shaping some of the new stories from the moulds of some of those books. And granted, not all of the expanded universe was good. I will be the first to admit, sometimes it was random, weird, and sometimes even poorly written. 
There are a handful of books I would certainly not recommend to any fans who want to get into it, but when it was at its best, I still think to this day, it is some of the best Star Wars we've ever had. And you know, they might do the same with James Mangold's Dawn of the Jedi. The name of that movie is based on the books, and drawing upon some of those stories and their traditions, during a time when the Jedi were just trying to establish a new culture, that'd be insane. And just the struggle of finding the light. Often, interactions with other Force-sensitive groups, the way they fought with followers of the Bogan, the dark side of the Force, those who saw redemption and freedom in tapping into your emotions, not being afraid of them. And one of my favourite integrations in the new canon was Tython in The Mandalorian Season 2, a planet which originates in Legends. Now on the subject of The Mandalorian Season 2, my favourite season of that entire show, and Ming-Na Wen, speaking with Katie Sakoff, so Fennec Shand and bo spoke about her experience in the Luke episode, Chapter 16, and we know, to keep Luke a secret, even for those on set, John Favreau and Dave Filoni made them believe it was going to be Plo Koon. They even had a stand-in. But Ming-Na Wen now admits she suspected it was going to be Luke, but Katie had no idea. Having starred in the Clone Wars series as the voice of Bo, Sakoff 100% believed Dave, knowing that Plo is his favourite Jedi. She must have been shocked when she assumed he survived Order 66. But to Ming-Na Wen, it was obvious. In the past, she admitted she wanted to see some kind of Jedi in Mando, not just Grogu, not just Ahsoka, and Luke Skywalker was her fan hope. She replied to Katie in this interview by saying this, Oh, I knew it was Luke. How could you not? The glove, the lightsaber, the R2-D2 they painted green. I turned to John and Dave and said, Are you kidding me? But Katie Sarkoff was thrown off. And she texted Dave when she was watching the finale, and she said, I can't believe you lied to me. And he responded, are you enjoying it? Katie said yes, and Dave, in such a Dave fashion, responds, you're welcome. I mean, it was a shocking moment to the entire fandom, and it kind of felt like a bit of hope had been restored into the Star Wars brand. For a brief moment, the Luke that fans remembered and loved had returned. Really awesome stuff. But with that said, my dear friends, that is the latest Star Wars news. Did you enjoy this video? Let me know in the comments down below. If you did, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. May the force be with you, always.